Let's uh, call the meeting to order. The time is uh, 6.36 p.m. Uh, again, after some technical difficulty trying to get our go to meeting, uh, meeting going. Uh, some are at the uh, council, city, council, city Hall Council Chambers at 10 West Street Street uh, for a regularly scheduled City Council meeting. Today's date is December 28, 2020, and the time is, uh, again, just a little after 5.30 p.m. I give a notice to the public that the Mayor and Council welcome comment from the public during discussion of any of the items on the agenda. You're required to step to the microphone or your phone or your iPad. State your name and address for the record. Limit the time you use to three minutes or less so others may be given an opportunity to speak. Speak clearly, direct your comments to the mayor and council, not to any city councilor specifically. It's at the discretion of the mayor and the council to respond to specific questions and comments or to have staff respond during the meeting. Now that we've been called to order, I've asked that um, um, Al Hoop, uh, who I believe is in attendance in person, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, under God, indivisible, with peace and struggle for all. Thank you. Okay. Um, I need to get to my agenda to either have it scroll down or get to my own. Roll call. Yeah, roll call. Thank you. There we go. Here. Howdy. Here. Here. I'm done. Here. Martin. Here. Thompson. Here. Warren. Here. Very good. Full house. Thank you. Uh, does uh, anybody on the council or does the city administrator have any comments to make before we get going? Hearing none, uh, let's recognize the years of service. Um, actually, let me ask our city clerk to do that because she'll know how to pronounce some of these names that I won't. All right, we're recognizing years of service from the month of December. For Bob Ranson, 25 years. Jerry Larson, 25 years. Eric Seaman, 10 years. Cody Schmidt, 5 years. Wyatt Shellengowski, 5 years. Tanner Hunt, 5 years. Thank you for doing that for us, and thank you for all the good years of service from all these loyal employees that we have. Okay. Um, well, let's do the consent agenda. I'd entertain a motion to approve it. I, I know that we got two corrections by email today. And so with those corrections, is anybody willing to uh, move that we approve the consent agenda? So moved, Your Honor. Second. Very good. Uh, let's call the roll on that. Your Honor, before we do that, can we remove item number nine, consent agenda, please? If I, if I heard correctly, it was to remove item number nine. Yes, thank you. Okay, we can do that. And with uh, that item removed, let's uh, call the roll on the consent agenda motion. Aaron? Yes. Cahill? Yes. Gowdy? Yes. 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 Martin? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Very good. Would you read all of those except for number nine for us then, please? Approve the minutes for the December 14th, 2020 meeting and December 21st, 2020 meeting and a bill list of $1,299,929.92. Approve tree trimmer license for MPR Tree Enterprises and Pella Tree Service, Inc. Approve September 2020 financial statements. Approve October 2020 financial statements. Resolution approving fees charged by the Parks and Recreation Department for the rental and use of the Veterans Memorial Coliseum. Resolution approving the liquor license application process for the Veterans Memorial Coliseum. 
resolution improving and modification of an agreement with the Fisher Community Center Board of Trustees and the Fisher Governor Foundation for the public use of the Fisher Community Center. Resolution waiving conflict of interest related to Ehlers and Cooney's PC's representation of the Marshalltown Community School District in exchange of real property. Resolution transferring funds for fiscal year 2021 through September 30th, 2020. Resolution approving door belonging contract change order for extension of time to complete chipping and hauling logs. Resolution ordering construction of the 4th Street and Meadow Lane Storm Sewer Enhancements Project SMW 17001, setting public hearing on proposed plans, specifications, form of contract, and estimated cost, and directing publication of notice to bidders. Resolution approving an agreement for professional services with Class Valuable Garber Associates, Inc. for the Sidewalk Gap Year 2 project, SBW 20002, in the city of Marshalltown, Iowa, in the amount of $69,170. Thank you. Let's go back and revisit item number nine. I think Mr. Thompson was the one that wanted that removed from the agenda and maybe he could address uh, his concerns. Before we do that, Your Honor, do those corrections need to be read into the record? Uh, I'll leave that to uh, our city administrator, uh, uh, whether we've got the proper uh, paper stream already or not. Um, yes, I will have the city clerk share those adjustments to the to the uh, specific item. Okay, item number one in the bill list uh, detail file. The correction to note was that the payroll noted pay period 26. Excuse me, noted pay period 24, and it should be pay period 26. And the other correction was to item number 10. Um, in the resolution document, the title had a typo um, as far as the fiscal year. It should be for fiscal year 21, not fiscal year 20. Very good. Is that, is that acceptable to you, Mr. Thompson? Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. Appreciate it. Very good. Then, then let's take up number uh, nine. Tentative resolution and setting a public hearing for providing for the existing conveyance and transfer of street and alley here and described from the city of Marshalltown, Iowa to the Marshalltown Community School District. Is there a motion to approve number nine? So moved, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Is there a second? Second, Your Honor. Mr. Gowdy, thank you. Okay, discussion. Well, Your Honor, if I Go ahead, Mr. Thompson. Um, I just want to make sure that this, since this involves the city park, and this is the first step in the land swap with the school district um, park for park, um, I just want to make sure the public is aware when that public meeting will be. Can we, will that be the next meeting, Jessica? Yes. So uh, just to kind of go into detail, because there are multiple steps here. So. Um, this would be setting a public hearing on the vacation of part of South Forth Avenue as well as an alley in the area um, for January 11th. So the public hearing and then there would be an action for you to fully vacate that following. On that January 11th meeting will also be a, an exchange agreement with the school district that will spell out the terms of, of that as well. And so um, to exchange property under Iowa Code, uh, the city attorney um, shared that we do not actually have to hold a public hearing for that. Um, but I've uh, asked the school district if that is something that they would like to do to sort of formalize that in the product. That's all I asked, Your Honor, was just to clarify since it is park for park um, that the public be aware that this very next meeting um, this will be being discussed. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion by anybody on the council? For some reason, we're getting some static, and when we get it, Ms. Cahill, I think it's it's your picture that lights up for some reason. I don't know why. Um, let's uh, call for public comment and open the uh, lines for 10 seconds. I'm muted, Your Honor. Thank you. 
Let's vote. Gabby? Yes. 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 Thompson? Yes. Weirin? Um, yes. Okay, that carried as well. Let's go on to uh, the first motion and only uh, motion, and that is, uh, well, if you would read that to us, Madam Clerk. Table item, the appointment to fill the vacancy of first ward counselor. To uh, appoint a replacement counselor. Your Honor, I'd like to make a motion, please. Please do. And I assume I need to make a motion to take this off the table as well. I, you know, technically we should do that first, yes. Okay, I will move to take this off the table. Is there a second? Second. Second. Let, let's call the roll. Item. Yes. Martin? Yes. Thompson? No. Aaron? Oh, yes. Aaron? Yeah. Howdy? Yes. Luke? Yes. Very good. And with that uh, now on the table, is there anyone who would like to make a motion in this regard? I would like to make a motion, Your Honor. I would propose or I would um, propose that we appoint Mike Lottiehoff to fill the vacancy of the first ward counselor. I would second that. Thank you. I'll call for discussion. Your Honor, if I may, Go ahead. I would propose um, and I support Mike Lottiehoff for this position because Mike is a um, long term member of the first ward. He embellishes the heart of the first ward. Um, you know, every community in our city has maybe its own little um, own feelings and its own um, makeup. And I think that Mike would represent the first ward as a person looking out for all the individuals as well as the businesses within the ward. He is a person I have worked with personally on a number of committees and he is a go-getter. If he says he's going to do something, consider it done. He stated that he is a listener, but then yet he says, how can we make this happen? Or how can we correct this? Or, or what can we do to make this better? I know Mike sat on the board previously, so he would be able to um, start in this position without any, uh, I mean, with, with limited time to get into place. So again, I support Mike uh, Lottiehoff for this position because I feel he exemplifies the people of the first ward. Thank you. Thank you. Other discussion? Your Honor. Yes, sir. Um, I don't disagree with Sue one bit. I think Mike is more than qualified candidate for the position. Um, the only uh, comments I have are with regards to, to Raymond, who I made the motion to last time. Um, I think he shows a unique appetite to get involved in the community and has since he's moved to town a short amount of time. The plethora of engagement he's had um, specifically in a community which he um, had just become a part of. Um, and that being said, um, has had the opportunity to engage um, with what I would call a demographic that represents the first ward um, while focused in downtown, but with building owners, um, business owners, et cetera. Uh, I think he has a drive and brings kind of a fresh perspective to uh, what we're trying to accomplish in Marshalltown, um, being that he's not a long-term resident, which I think is the strength of his in this case. Um, I think there's a lot of things that um, both candidates, to be honest, um, uh, accomplish with regards to what they bring to the table for Sue's um, replacement for this, the remaining part of her term. Um, so I have nothing against Mike, but I wanted to, to vocalize that I 
um, would be in favor of Raymond in this instance, and uh, we'll be supporting uh, him with regards to resolution if so uh, able to. Other other comments by anybody on the council? See, you, I may. You, you may. Um, I just want to reiterate that I think all three of the people that put their names in are more than qualified. Uh, any one of them would be an asset to uh, the city council and to the residents of Marshalltown. But I want to, once again, I just want to say that I will be voting no on whoever um, is presented on the floor tonight, just because, like I said before, I truly believe the residents should have the right to choose, not the six of us, the seven of us in this case, um, to fill Sue's seat. So I just want to make sure everyone knows it's not a, a no vote against the three candidates, it's a no vote against the, the process. So thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Any other counselor wish to speak? Let's open the uh, lines of communication for 10 seconds. Bethany, Your Honor, Bethany wanted to say something. Oh, okay, Bethany, we, we can't hear you. Bethany, are you called in and are you muted on the phone as well? Jessica, are you trying to dial her in? No, she's she's trying to dial in. Okay. This is frustrating, I know from personal experience, one of the last meetings trying to get in. Your Honor, would it make sense to open the lines up while Bethany's trying to yeah. hear her mic? Let's do that. We'll, we'll we'll hope that we get a chance to have her speak too. The lines are unmuted, Your Honor. Thanks. Thanks for the suggestion, too, Gabe. Okay. Go ahead and mute the lines except for Bethany. Am I on? Yes. Okay. I don't know what happened. I'm so sorry. Oh, now I'm getting feedback. Okay, I'm going to go in the other room. Okay. So I know what I'll do. I'll just shut off my computer. That or mute it. There we go. Okay. Now I can see all of you and I don't have to. Okay. This is, these are my thoughts. I too think all three candidates would probably do a wonderful job. This is a very short term term. Um, I, I really do believe that we should have someone on board for the budget season. And um, I just, in listening to the interviews, and again, I'm sorry that I could not be on the call um, during the interviews last week. Um, when I listened to the interviews, um, I just felt strongly that the um, downtown plan um, is just, it's just the next biggest step for our downtown. And I think a strong downtown is going to help all of the neighborhoods around the downtown and mostly the first ward. Um, and I, so with, with that um, sense that we need just the strongest downtown possible. I was looking for the candidate who seems to have um, built relationships with downtown business owners, building owners, is involved in the business district, um, working with downtown businesses and business owner or the, the building owners. So I, um, I too just um, concluded that I think it would be a, um, a chance for um, Raymond to step into the role um, and provide his expertise. And then also um, um, 
we can, you know, all as a community test test it out. Is this is this a good fit for him? Is this, you know, his ward will test him out and decide if they're if um, if they like his style and how he um, handles the first ward affairs. So um, so that's where I I sit with it. Thank you. Thanks, Ms. Martin. Uh, any other counselors wish to uh, um, chime in, or should we call it to a vote? Your Honor, may I speak again? Is you may. It appropriate? Sure. I agree that we have three very good candidates before us tonight. I, I guess I just want to caution our all of the counselors that we have to remember it is the people in our districts um, in our wards that make up our representation, which is why we have four separate wards and then the at-large positions. I get concerned, and, and again, I've talked at length with Raymond, and I think that he will be an excellent candidate. I think he would, uh, but right now, I think we need to think of the people of the first ward, not just the businesses, because these are the people that have the most barriers to making their voices heard. And I think that having someone who has been embedded in the community for 30 plus years is going to be a strength. Someone who has lived in the neighborhoods, who's worked at the school in the neighborhood, who has been active in um, other areas. So I, I agree downtown is important, but I think we have to remember it is the people that we represent and we have other at large positions that represent all parts of the city, but the purpose of the ward representation are to represent the actual people within the districts, within those geographical um, areas. So again, I would support Mike Lottihoff for the councilor position. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to weigh in before we call the roll? Let's call the roll. I'm sorry. Did you say Gowdy? Is this a yeah. on, on uh, Bloody Hop? Is that what we're voting? No. The motion on the table is for the appointment of Mike Lottie Hop to fill the first ward vacancy. No. Did that come across? I think we got the Gaudi no. Okay. Who? No. Item. No. Martin. Yes. Thompson. No. Warren. No. Yes. Okay. Thank you. By my count, that failed. Does anyone else wish to make a motion? Your Honor. Yes. I would propose a resolution appointing Raymond Starks to fill the vacancy of first ward counselor. Thank you. Motion noted, is there a second? Uh, second. Okay. Any further discussion by the counselor? Counselors. Let's go ahead and open the lines for 10 seconds. The lines are unmuted, Your Honor. Thank you. Roll call. Warren? Yes. Hale? Yes. County? Yes. Yes. Item? Yes. 
Martin? Yes. Thompson? No. Very good. That motion has carried. And before we go on to the next item, I'd like to say that all four people who originally put their names in were really qualified and it was encouraging to see the interest in in this sort of thing. It just is a good sign for our town moving forward. So thank thank you all for uh, for running and for the good interviews that we had. Okay, let's go on to uh, resolutions. Would you read the first one, Madam Clerk? Resolution approving the fiscal year 2020 comprehensive annual financial report for the city of Marshalltown. Is there a motion to approve that resolution? So moved, Your Honor. Any second? We're, we're getting quite a bit of feedback. Jessica, if you can tell who, who's likely to be doing that, can you let us know? I'm trying to proactively mute people where I can. Okay, thank you. Um, I heard a motion. I don't know. Uh, I have second. I'd second the motion. I think he made a motion along with me, and I'll second it. Okay, thank you. Let's uh, call for discussion of the council. Um, Your Honor, this is the city administrator, Jessica Kinter, and uh, Diana is unable to be here tonight just to give you the brief overview of this. Um, this can be a little bit confusing because we call it the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, but it truly is our audit for the last fiscal year, fiscal year 2020, which ended on June 30th of 2020. Um, I, Bailey, our auditing firm out of the Duke, has completed their, their review um, of our financials, and uh, everything is now assembled into this final document, of which uh, we do have available in hard copy for each council member, but is available electronically with the packet and then also on our website. Um, I won't go into the detail that Diana would normally go into, um, but uh, her memo does contain quite a bit of information there um, about some of the differences in, in uh, where we were from last fiscal year to this fiscal year. The thing that I think is the most important is what she pointed out on pages eight to 10, which is, um, where uh, I Bailey, our auditors, give us a um, unmodified clean opinion, which means that uh, everything is presented and um, presented fairly in all material aspects. And so uh, there is also a compliance section in the audit as well that they go through, and that's where they do specific testing of specific processes, functions, and different things. And there were no findings for, for this year. So those are two very positive things. Um, Diana has noted that. Uh, uh, a little bit of what we've seen in sort of some different activity is we had with the tornado that actually occurred in fiscal year 19. So we had a lot of activity spending money in fiscal year 19, but did not receive those funds uh, reimbursements from FEMA and some from insurance until fiscal year 20. So that that is showing. Our capital assets increased as well. As you'll recall, uh, the uh, construction um, on the police and fire building was not done until August of 2019 or fiscal year of 2020. So uh, we, we have that actually happening in the last fiscal year as well, as well as uh, construction starting on the Coliseum. Uh, Diana does also note that uh, our general fund fund balance can be a slightly deceiving, uh, where um, we, we show a balance of $5.2 million at the end of the fiscal year, which is great. Um, however, uh, there is part of that that cannot be touched. Um, because it is restricted. And then there is another part of our unrestricted $4.2 million balance, uh, which we have internally restricted as well. So um, there's this, it's not all uh, liquid cash that's easily accessible um, for the council to spend, however um, you might please. So there's some hoops to go through and some restrictions there. Um, aside from that, uh, I don't know that there's anything else I'd, I'd hit on. So actually the, the one final thing that I would say is that um, we recently at a council meeting recognized Diana and the finance staff for receiving the Governor, Go Government Finance Officers Association Award for Excellence in Financial Reporting for fiscal year 2019. That document before you tonight will be submitted to the GFOA um, here in early January, and uh, we will be looking to uh, see an award for this document as well. 
Excellent uh, coverage on that report. And uh, thank you again, Diana, for the wonderful work we've seen her do for us for years. Uh, do any of the counselors have any questions or comments about this? Let's unmute for uh, 10 seconds. The lines are unmuted, Your Honor. Roll call. Gowdy? Yes. Item? Yes. Martin? Yes. Thompson? Yes. 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 Very good. Thank you. That carried. Let's go on to the second resolution, please. Resolution approving an agreement between the City of Marshalltown and YSS of Marshall County to implement a pilot project to study the delivery of social services in collaboration with City Law Enforcement Services and the allocation of $150,000 to support this project. Is there a motion to approve that resolution? I move for approval, Your Honor. Motion by second. We're in second by Gowdy. Any discussion? Your Honor. Ms. Brighton, go ahead. I fully appreciate the collaboration on this project, knowing full well that that as a former school counselor that there were a lot of needs out there that sadly were not met. And my hope is that this will fill some of the gap and provide for an innovative and effective program that, that involves uh, those folks shown in most need. So um, I fully appreciate the effort and the innovation parts of, of this project. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments? Your Honor, if I may. You may. Uh, when I uh, brought forth the amendment um, to Bethany's motion to fund this at the full rate of $150,000 for the first year, I want to make sure the public understands that I wanted this project to get off to a great start, uh, not having the police department or YSS worry about um, funding obstacles in the first year. Um, but I want to make sure the public also understands my intent is that the city would not continue to fund this fully, that hopefully this is a very successful program, this pilot, and uh, we get everybody else to jump on board and, and see that this continues year after year. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. I, I've been telling people that your motion and the unanimous vote to approve it uh, was one of the most fascinating things I've seen at, the, at a council meeting in 10 years. If there aren't any other com comments by the council, let's open the, uh, let's unmute for another 10 seconds. The lines are unmuted, Your Honor. Thank you. Let's vote away. Thompson. Yes. Aaron. Yes. No. Yes. Howdy. Yes. Who? Yes. Item. Yes. Martin. Yes. Unanimous again. I've been hoping that this will be the pilot project that uh, the rest of the state uh, follows and adopts. This is pretty cool, truly. Okay, obviously that carried. Let's go on to item number three. Would you read what that one is? Public hearing and resolution approving the development agreement with McFarland Clinic authorizing annual appropriation tax increment payments and pledging certain tax increment revenues to the payment of the agreement. Okay, I'll declare the public hearing is open at 6.10 p.m. Did the clerk receive any written comments? No, Your Honor. Well, time for the public comments. Open the mics for 10 seconds. The microphones are open, Your Honor. 
Your Honor. Thank you. Staff review. Um, you'll you'll recall that this is the last step in uh, a few months long process, uh, whereby we first initially amended the urban renewal area, um, uh, urban renewal area number three, to include this project. And once that happened, we could move forward with actually pursuing a development agreement with McFarland Clinic for the um, construction of a 66,000 uh, square foot medical facility uh, that will be located off of the, the new East Merle Hibs Drive. Um, for that, uh, we are uh, making an obligation to them that if they construct that, we will provide um, a tax increment finance rebate or a rebate of incremental taxes of 50% each year for 10 years up to $2.4 million. And so that is uh, what is before you tonight um, for the public hearing, for the public to comment on, as well as then for your approval. Thank you. Time for council comments. Hearing and seeing none, I declare the public meeting is, oh, I'm sorry. If there are no others, I'd like to speak on this. You may. Um, I told the, the representatives from McFarland Clinic that I would fight this up until the day they cut the ribbon. Um, so I'd be voting no on this once a public hearing is over and resolution is presented. But at the same time, I want the public to understand that the doctors themselves of the McFarland Clinic are putting up a sizable share of the money to make this happen for the residents of Marshalltown. And I think this is a great thing for the city of Marshalltown. Uh, my only objection and the reason for my, my fighting this is that I would love to have seen it stay downtown. And I think Deb and the others at McFarland know how I feel. But this, this is good for Marshalltown. And and that the doctors are showing that they're willing to put money into this project speaks volumes for their belief and their support of the residents of Marshalltown. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Anyone else wish to speak? If not, I'll declare the public hearing as concluded at 6.13 p.m. And should I invite a motion to approve the resolution after we've had that uh, hearing or go on to the next item? Yes, Your Honor, we need a motion to approve the resolution. The floor is open for such a motion. So moved, Your Honor. Thanks, Ms. Gale. Second, Your Honor. Second by okay. Martin. Thank you, got it. Okay, well, we've already had the uh, Discussion on it. Let's go ahead and take a vote. Martin? Yes. Thompson? No. Warren? Yes. Stahel? Yes. Yavi? Yes. Yes. Item? Yes. Thank you. That carried as well. On to the uh, next item four, please. 2020 amendments to the plans for the Marshalltown Urban Revitalization Area Number One and Marshalltown Urban Revitalization Area Number Two, with the first item being a public hearing on proposed 2020 amendment of Urban Revitalization Plan for Urban Revitalization Area Number One. I declare the public hearing is now open at 6:15 p.m. Did you receive any written comments to the clerk's office? No, Your Honor. Let's open the mics for 10 seconds for public comment. Unmuted, Your Honor. Thank you. Staff review. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to speak to both of these items. Um, this does appear a little bit different on the agenda because we actually have two public hearings and then one action related to both of them, but they're very similar in nature. Um, as I had mentioned uh, in a previous discussion, I have at the end of November, it was quite by accident that I discovered that uh, two of our three urban revitalization areas, uh, urban revitalization being tax exemption areas, uh, were set to expire on 
on December 31st of 2020. And so uh, what we have here is basically the public hearing required um, on an amendment to those um, original plans to uh, basically rephrase it so that it is open unless the council considers uh, amending it otherwise in the future so that we hopefully don't uh, lose these moving forward due to a staff error. And so we have these two public hearings followed by a resolution to accomplish that. And then um, I'll speak to it a little bit later on, but we do have an, an ordinance that is related in terms, or two ordinances that are related in uh, terms of um, some tax actions related to those um, areas, which we need to correct that way. So um, I'd be happy to answer any questions, but ultimately this, this uh, or, uh, urban, repair, urban revitalization area number one and number two will, uh, renewing these will continue the three year 100% tax abatement for commercial properties um, into the future. Thanks for that review. Thanks for catching that uh, they were about to expire as well. Any council comments? Hearing none, I declare this public hearing closed at 6.17 p.m. And let's uh, open, let's go to number two then. I declare the public hearing uh, for the revival, for the revitalization plan for urban revitalization. Jeez, can't talk today. Area number two, that public hearing is open at 4.17 p.m. Did the clerk receive any written comments? No, Your Honor. Let's open the mic or call lines for 10 seconds again. I'll practice saying vitalization. Okay, so much for public comments. Uh, staff review, uh, we've already pretty well had that. Anything you'd like to add, though? No, Your Honor. Okay. Time for council comments. Hearing and seeing none, I will declare the public hearing closed at 4.18 p.m. and entertain a motion to approve the resolution that's the number three here to approve both of these. So moved, Your Honor. Second. Motion. Okay. Motion by Eisen, second by Gowdy. Roll call. Gowdy? Yes. Coop? Yes. Item? Yes. Martin? Yes. Thompson? No. Warren? Yes. Yeah. Shadow? Yes. Very good. Carried as well. Let's go on to item I on the agenda. That's ordinances. Uh, Madam Clerk, please tell us the first one. Ordinance to amend the Code of Ordinances, City of Marshalltown, Iowa, by amending Chapter 77 parking schedules. Schedule number two, no parking anytime. Second reading. Is there a motion to approve it? So moved, Your Honor. Motion by Isom. Second, Your Honor. Second by Thompson. Discussion. Good evening, Justin Nickel, Public Works Director. Uh, this is our second reading on a change to our no parking schedule, uh, specifically for the 800 to 900 block of East Boone Street. Uh, the area serves as the entrance to the Marshall County Secondary Roads um, uh, yard and uh, had received um, concerns about the ability to move equipment through that block and to be able to turn off of 8th Avenue on to East Boone Street. Be happy to answer any questions. Are there any? Let's unmute for 10 seconds again. The lines are unmuted, Your Honor. Thank you. Roll call. Thompson? Yes. Where? Yes. Yes. Gowdy? Yes. 
Yes. Yes. We'll go back to Cahill. Cahill, yes. Thank you. Very good. That carried. Would you read the next one for us? Before we do that, um, can we waive a third reading on this? It's my understanding we could with a motion to do so. I would make a motion to waive this since we're in the snow season and uh, the county snow plows are coming in and out of that area. I would like to get this started as soon as possible. Thank you. Second. I, second. I, don't, I don't anticipate any uh, need for public discussion or further discussion on this one. Let's just call the roll on the uh, uh, pending motion. Aaron? Yes. 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 Howdy. Yes. Howdy. Yes. 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 Very good. It is uh, an ordinance in place now, as soon as we sign it. Thank you. Okay, on to the next one, please. Ordinance to amend the Code of Ordinance, City of Marshalltown, Iowa, by amending Chapter 76 Traffic Schedule, Schedule Number 4, Stop Intersection, Second Reading. I'd entertain a motion to approve this and maybe even a motion to approve it with a waiver of the third reading. I'll move here, Honor. Second. And it's my understanding this would be to waive the third reading as well in that motion. Uh, yes. Any any discussion? Uh, again, Justin Nickel, Public Works Director. Um, again, second reading of this ordinance uh, change uh, to include new stop signs constructed with street projects in 2020. Be happy to answer any questions. Hearing none, let's open, let's unmute the phones and mics for about five seconds. Lines are unmuted, Your Honor. Thanks. Roll call. Weirin? Yes. Can you help? Yes. County? Yes. Yes. Isom? Yes. Burton? Yes. Yes. Very good. Thank you. That carried. When able, please read the third one for us. Ordinance ratifying and repealing prior ordinances relating to Marshalltown Urban Revitalization Area Number One. First reading. Floor is open for motion. So moved, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Ison. Is there a second? Second. Second. Thank you. Discussion. Some clarity to this one and to the next item, which are, are pretty much the same thing. Um, the as our legal counsel at Dorsey and Whitney was was reviewing what needed to be done to um, renew or to keep our, our urban revitalization areas extended. Um, they asked for what we had done in the past and uh, when I presented everything to them, they basically said that that was um, not the way that the plan date should have been extended. So they declared an ordinance basically uh, for each um, urban revitalization area to kind of correct uh, those past actions. And so that's what item three and four um, are before you tonight on the ordinance list. Any questions or comments for Jessica? Let's uh, open the mics for five seconds. Okay, roll call. Yes. 
Yes. Gowdy. Yes. Yes. Item. Yes. Martin. Yes. Thompson. No. Okay. That carried as well. And uh, let's go on to the fourth one. Read that one, Abel. Ordinance ratifying and repealing prior ordinances related to Marshalltown Urban Revitalization Area Number Two. For three. Any motion to approve? So moved, Your Honor. Motion by Gowdy. Is there a second? Second. Second by Martin, if I got the voice right. Um, I don't anticipate any more discussion on this one than the last one from the council or from the public, so let's just call the roll. Item? Yes. Martin? Yes. Thompson? No. Barron? Yes. Daniel? Yes. Gowdy? Yes. Yes. Very good. Thank you. On to discussion items. And the first one is the strategic plan review. Okay. So uh, we had our strategic planning session on November 20th, and we were not able to get through everything. And so there was some follow-up breaking and things that came out. Um, but I really felt like this process and doing it virtually, um, it, uh, it was not good. <laughs> and so there's, uh, there's great things that came out of uh, some of the things we were able to do, but we really just weren't able to have the same level of conversation and interaction that we have been um, in previous uh, sessions. So uh, one thing I want to kind of do today was kind of go back and do what we would typically do, like in a, a session when we were together and go through some of the things that um, Susan did have us kind of confirm, but we didn't talk about completely just to make sure we're all on the same page. And so um, just starting really big, you know, the first thing that we, we had a discussion about was, you know, our, our vision as well as then our values. Um, as you'll recall in the session, we actually did talk about where we were going to be connected. And uh, that, uh, that is something that we, we were able to provide examples of. So um, there was general agreement that this is still okay that there's no changes that we need to make um, for this. And so I wanted to to keep our keep the, the um, vision and the or the mission and the values out there and just make sure that this is something we're we're okay with and moving forward with. Thank you. Discussion? Um, So if there's nothing on that, I'll go to kind of that next layer of review in the strategic planning, which was our SWOT analysis, SWOT standing for strengths and weaknesses, um, uh, opportunities and threats. And uh, you'll recall that through that process, you know, our strengths and weaknesses were really a look at where we are internally, where the opportunities and threats are where we are externally. So I have updated this document with what we had discussed and uh, um, it adding some things, removing some things, combining some other things to try and make sure I could fit everything on there in a way that you can still read it. And so um, I hope everybody did have a chance to look at this and can tell me if um, there are any changes or anything that really needs to be made on this one. Um, or if this is at a level where we have general consensus to, to move forward with what's listed here. Any comments or questions? Okay. So then the, the next thing, and this is really kind of where we didn't get to together on things and just went straight into the, the implementation and kind of the work plan. Um, but uh, we have four goals and uh, and then each year we, we do review um, the objectives <laughs> under the goal. 
Um, I, I typically send away as courses is that as everybody has provided their feedback, um, that's been a great opportunity to go back and look at um, each objective and say, is there something that we're missing here? And uh, previously under goal one, we, we did expand, you know, what we had had for objectives. And so, you know, as we sit here and look at goal one and our objectives, uh, you know, this is this is our development goal. As we look at our objectives related to, you know, specifically supporting the Marshalltown Central Business District, um, as well as promoting commercial and industrial development. Uh, and now one of the things that we've done more of is putting, putting more of an emphasis on housing specifically, um, as well as then uh, looking at what role we play in, in development with infrastructure. And so um, there are certainly things that we list as sort of like little sub uh, under each objective, um, but those, some of those do directly relate back to the implementation plan. Some don't, um, some are, are left more broad where you could end up with some more specific actions in the implementation plan. You'll notice that everything in bold is new. Um, things that are have been struck through are, are ones where there has not been a need for them anymore. I will say that um, there are some items I just deleted rather than struck through because I was running out of, of space on a page. Um, but uh, hopefully this will be something that uh, you've had a chance to review and can tell me if there's any questions there. Um, the other thing, whoops, if we're going on to goal number two, the other thing I do want to share is over in that blue box is where um, on each of these pages will be sort of where we're at for key indicators. And so I, I will say that this is definitely my fault that I have not been able to get some data together to start really putting together what that dashboard looks like so that we'll, we'll be able to start measuring our success on things. Um, we're, this, this year will definitely be a year of trying to go back make sure that we have some data that we can then start uh, maybe categorizing a little bit better as we go on things. So um, I also do have, um, as I uh, mentioned uh, um, in my memo, we do now have a, a draft of the um, community survey that will help provide um, some of that indicator data as well with like customer satisfaction and things. So the blue areas are to be updated, but my goal is that uh, hopefully by the end of this first quarter of 2021 is that we're coming back with a, a dashboard that shows where we're at, where we were at in 2020, if we have that data, um, or uh, at least gets that process started and gets us a little bit closer where we're actually tracking things that tell us if we're being successful. So any, any questions on goal number one and the, the four objectives that we have? Jessica, or Your Honor, if I may. You may. Did I miss something on objective three? Why was the zoning struck out of there? Is um, that because we hired somebody already? Yes, so okay. basically it was something where we decided to not individually look at that and place an individual requirement with it, but it will be wrapped up in the larger zoning review. All right, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. You are welcome. Any other comments or questions? Okay, I'll go on to, to goal two here. Um, goal two is enhancing our public image, and that's uh, things that we can do as well as uh, things that our partners can do. And so we really define this in, in a few very specific ways. Um, one being that we can enhance our image by eliminating blight. Um, there's some there's some cracks over here that I wanted to kind of you know clarify as well is that we certainly have blight remediation issues or blight issues in the downtown area. Um, we we do try and like uh, I guess in some ways I look at that as being something that's supporting economic development in the downtown area if we can get that rather than enhancing our public image. But there is definitely crossover on some of these, and so it's kind of all where where do we track them? How do we look at that? So um, one of the the things that uh, um, we also look at is how do we um, enhance our quality of life and aesthetics. Um, that that is something that enhances our public image as well, and that ultimately we have uh, um, a number of projects which we undertake or which are undertaken by others in the community um, which, which work towards that. The third objective is really about communication, and there's so much of communication and how we communicate and what we communicate that really helps define our image internally and externally as well. And so communication is an area where we can continually improve and uh, that is an area that we 
we continually outline um, some different things that support that objective. And then finally, we want to support the marketing of Marshall Town. And currently, that is really done with some support of uh, Vision Marshall Town and then um, financial support of uh, the era, my short Marshall Town Area Chamber of Commerce uh, through the um, tourism and promotions agreement that we have. And so that is that is really um, kind of the, the different part. This is not like closed-ended. Closed -ended. There are definitely different ways that we can promote our image. This is sort of what we have defined things as initially. And so um, I'm looking for any feedback you might have on, on that. Anybody have any feedback? Okay. Okay. Um, the next goal is what I like to say is our um, back of house goal. It's the one of, of, you know, really about our organization, make sure we're doing the best we can internally to make sure we're doing the best we can to serve externally. And so this is where we, we kind of outline the things that we need to review and update in terms of policies, procedures, and ordinances. Um, looking at what plans need to be developed and, and uh, looked at. This is where we also look at our, our workforce and making sure that uh, we have a workforce that is um, successful and ready to go. Um, I'd like to think that, you know, looking at the years of service that we had, I think in November, which was a, a lengthy list, and what we had here in December as well, uh, we do have a long tenured workforce that uh, has served us well for, for many years, and how do we make sure that we continue that? And then the final objective here is, you know, what are those existing things that we do and um, existing financial uh, functions that we, we have um, and making sure that we are never taking our eye off of looking at those and finding efficiencies where possible and bringing things back to you. And I, I would say that this goal is a, it's a hefty one. It seems like it's always a, a hefty one each year. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that means that uh, we are constantly looking at how we internally operate and looking for uh, better ways to do things or different ways to do things um, to, to be a better organization serving our public. And so I'd be happy to answer any questions on this one. Fire away if you have any questions. Let's go on to number four. Okay, the fourth one is where we, we look outside to say that, uh, you know, we as the city aren't the only ones who, who make this a community and it takes others, whether it's citizens, for-profit, non-profit, or other groups to, to make us all work together. So we call out some very specific relationships here where we've had um, uh, definitely more ongoing relationships and regular relationships, uh, that being with the Arts uh, and Culture Alliance, and the Marshalltown Public Art Committee, as well as with Trails Inc. And so we've identified some very specific things that we would like to work with them on um, and support each other uh, mutually on those things as well. Uh, we also want to just make sure that we're not taking our eyes off of other partnerships that could exist with the, the partnership with YSS uh, on tonight's agenda being one that is a, a very big one um, here to, to, to look at. So this is kind of where things become a catch-all, but I like to say that this is the thing where as stuff comes up during the year, does it relate back to this objective and to this goal? And uh, as we're being approached for partnerships or support of something, um, I, I always view it through the lens of if it doesn't relate back to this, then, then should we be doing it? And so I think that's the, the question that's always in my mind as we are approached um, by many outside entities for a number of things. And so, uh, that's, that's kind of where things, oh, and then I guess there is objective for this one, I would say is still, it's fairly weak. It's, uh, it's kind of one of those that you don't know what it might mean until something comes up in the legislative session, but, um, really looking at how do we, how do we use those organizations that are available to us, like the Iowa League of Cities, um, to make sure that, uh, we are impacting legislation in a positive way. This really came about. I think with the conversation of backfill and making sure that we were not taking our seat away from the table as Iowa's 17th largest city and expressing our concern for um, backfill to continue and what it really means to our community. 
Um, that bill is certainly not the only thing that comes up every legislative session. There's a number of things. And so I think that's the hard thing to, you never know what's going to come up. And so it's hard to say this, these things specifically, but uh, we have definitely mentioned that we want to work with our local legislators and the Iowa League of Cities on those issues that impact cities. On that one, we're going to have a pretty good legislative resource down in Des Moines. We'll miss her on the council, but um, it will be nice to have somebody with the experience of being on the council who's actually got a vote down there and can uh, keep us abreast. Yes, I don't know if Councilmember Cahill knows how much I'll be contacting her yet, but uh, <laughs> she's on speed dial. It, if I may, I was going to offer to make sure that, yes, please, um, I know this legislator will want to communicate regularly with those issues regarding our city and our our uh, area here in Marshalltown and Northern Marshall County. So yes, please consider me as a positive resource to work for positive change for the city. Thank you. Thank you. And so this kind of wraps up that, that middle step that we really didn't spend much time talking about um, at the, the planning session, as well as then incorporates kind of some of the things that you can see um, that ultimately did, did end up going out to you on the yeah. trip for priorities of goals three and four. And so if there's no questions here, I'm going to move on to that final document. Jessica, I have a question. Yes, Bill. Um, the highlighted thing item under objective three deals with Fisher Community Center. You and I have talked about it in the past and in the, the current time frame. Could you describe the means of support for Fisher Community Center other than the city of Marshalltown? Well, I think um, the Fisher Community Center is owned by the Fisher Governor Foundation. And so I think that's the, the um, thing to remember is that's who the, the owner is. Um, their, their previous support has really come from rentals um, as well as the support from the city. Uh, uh, there is definitely a lot more to talk about, about this building and as well as the relationships to the land and to the governance. Um, I'm going to guess that many of you might not know that it's actually the Iowa DOT that owns the land that the building is built on. And so there are some there are some things that really need to be hammered out and figured out. Uh, and so that's why that's there. I do believe that stuff will be coming forward fairly soon as I don't think there's an appetite to undertake a significant renovation of a building that you don't own the land for. So um, more to come on that one. Thank you. Other okay. questions or comments? So all of that information um, and what you what you all provided in the survey is really where I, I came back to um, how does that all formulate into a work plan where we've got a, a deadline projected as well as where we have, um, you know, some, some different things to, to look at and sort of talk about and digest. And so um, this is something that if you would want to move it forward on the January 11th meeting for discussion, we certainly are for uh, uh, approval, we could. Otherwise, I'll just go through this tonight and we can always bring it back for more discussion, more changes. So as, as the feedback that, that you all provide um, in the strategic planning sessions is distilled down to things. And as I go back and look at my evaluation where you are really trying to identify what are those priority things to, to work on in the next year, that's really where we get a schedule here. One thing that uh, I will point out is that I did take a very hard look at anything where we had an ongoing deadline and tried to figure out if there was a way to rephrase that where there would be an action that would occur by a certain date. So Council Member Thompson, I hope you appreciate the dates that are in there. I do. <laughs> so uh, I have highlighted items in, in green, which were uh, things that were highly rated by everybody during the, during the strategic planning session. And then I put in bold those things that are, are new items. So you can kind of see what's there. Uh, we definitely do have a, a lot of um, different things that are important and new, uh, which I think is, is an important thing. But then um, I do like to make sure, because I consider this kind of a work plan for myself, 
that we're not overlooking things that are kind of uh, stuff that we still have to do, like administer the catalyst building program and the shared ball program, because it certainly takes time and there definitely is an impact with those programs. Um, I, I don't know if I if there's anything specific in this one that I really want to, to point out. Um, I do feel like there uh, are some things that um, after the fact, going through things, moving things around that seem to make sense and, and putting, um, uh, putting in this school or in other schools. Um, but I, I think it's something that we, we certainly, you know, are open to feedback on um, as staff. So any, any questions on sort of the, the things that we've said we'll do in 2021 and, and kind of beyond under goal one? Okay, if not, I'll move on to, to goal two. Um, again, things, things get fairly lengthy in some of these. So uh, as um, we look at, uh, you know, goal two, enhancing our public image, um, again, there's, there's definitely some things that were highly rated. I will say an objective one, because initially there was very, there were very few items. We actually didn't rank those in um, our planning session, um, but ultimately I, the, the, the brownfield stuff was in another goal, and I thought it was really best kind of in this goal initially, um, so I put it back there. So um, as we kind of go through down through here, there's not as much um, new stuff. I do want to point out that um, in consultation with both the police chief and fire chief, both very much want to hold their citizen academies this year. Um, however, it is too early to tell what could happen in 2021. So we, we all are hopeful and believe that we'll be back online for 2022. So I did put a to be determined there just because the, the timing of when those would normally occur is just not something that we have any certainty with at this point in time. Um, I, I do want to mention that the Budgeting 101 meetings will be coming back um, here. Uh, uh, Chief Tepper actually asked Diana if, he could, if she could put some information together to um, present to some of his staff uh, later um, in the first quarter of 2021. And so that will be happening. And then once it's put together, we can really start uh, doing some things virtually as well as with some uh, online recording. And then finally, I did reach out to um, the Chamber of Commerce as well as to uh, Vision Marshalltown to really see um, what, they, what they were going to be doing in this next year. Uh, and really, I, it, there was nothing concrete that we could certain could do um, except for really continue to support with the more than ever and um, city communication uh, that has taken a, a turn into some discussion of do we put that logo um, somewhere here in council chambers um, to sort of memorialize that. Um, we've got a lot of wall space here that would be available. And then uh, um, I didn't include it in here, but uh, the chamber has a regional marketing campaign that will be happening with, uh, I believe, a statewide publication that, or a, a state publication that gets distributed to a wider audience. And they've they've asked for our support on that as well, um, meaning sharing the word right now, not financial support. So, uh, but we we continue to ask those questions of how can we um, continue to support our partners in the marketing of Marshall Town. Your Honor, I have a question, if I may. You may. Uh, Jessica, under Objective 1, um, consider an ordinance for the registration of abandoned vacant buildings. Uh, is that date, June 30th, realistic with all the legal hoops you have to jump through? Because I'd love, I would love to see us do this. We can, legally, we can put some teeth into the vacant buildings that the owners are still paying the taxes on, but it's still considered blight. Is that if they pay taxes, we can't do the 657, right? Um, well, uh, not necessarily. Um, there's there's some options there. So I think you know the purpose of this ordinance would be so that we would have a, an idea of what all we're working with. I think it's fair to say that typically our vacant or abandoned buildings are the ones that tend to be our nuisance call. And so if we had a registry of those, um, then it makes it much easier for for Joe to say. These are probably the known properties I need to be checking on to make sure things are happening um, because they're most likely to be my nuisances. And so 
Um, this is an ordinance that a number of cities have already adopted. Um, and so I think uh, I think it would be very easy to bring back um, a draft to you probably in the first quarter of this year to just see if it meets the needs of, of what the council would be looking for and what staff would be looking for. Yeah, I know some cities have passed laws or ordinances that they actually charge property owners for the policing of vacant buildings to some success and some not so successful. Um, and I don't know where that stands legally. Is that something we're pursuing? Um, so I, I can't say that I have any draft prepared or anything, um, but I, I do know what there would definitely be an administrative fee oh. proposed to to basically monitor, you know, all, I, I think it'd probably be more of an administrative fee than a policing fee that could be set because it's, uh, I would say, you know, the police are probably aware and are definitely doing drive-bys, but it's really that tasking of our, our one code enforcement officer on, on these properties that tends to be uh, more of a drain um, to our resources. Well, I would support anything you brought forward uh, because especially like downtown, there's a lot of buildings that are vacant, but they're not violating. Right. I mean, we're violating some smaller ordinances, but nothing that we can really go after. I would, I would love to see some, see you put some teeth into this one. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's, it's one that I think we can definitely get a draft back and hopefully have something approved before June 30th. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Um, on to goal three, um, as I mentioned, this is our, our heavy hitter here. So we've got quite a few things um, that we had talked about with uh, within the strategic planning session that we had as well as then the ranking is for the most part what um, came uh, from you all um, moving forward in uh, in the survey monthly survey. And so um, uh, I think a lot of this is probably not new, you know, as we've talked about what are those policies and things. Uh, we did talk about the, the um, renewing local option sales tax into the future, as well as our zoning ordinance, which you guys have taken the first step to move on, as well as in our, our talk about property maintenance code and what that could do for us and making sure that we uh, can accomplish that by the end of the year and have a better conversation of it. Um, there are a few things that are that were new to this. Um, the uh, A few of them were brought up in, in the strategic planning. Um, like collecting uh, data on odor. Um, so we're, we're preparing for where that would be based out of and how we would do that and, and what that might look like to um, present to you at a later date uh, to make sure that we're, we're meeting the needs of the council and ensuring that we have data that will be helpful to us um, at some point in time. Um, as we look at our plans, you know, we, we've been doing a lot of planning over the last few years, but now we're, we're kind of back to the basics of making sure that we have an annual street improvement program in front of the council for um, approval, um, as well as making sure we're sticking towards those plans that we have, like the sidewalk gap program, as well as in our ADA um, uh, plan as well. So uh, one of the things that I came that was uh, that popped into my mind um, as we, we talked about things is we should be able to provide you and the public with sort of a summary of all the work that we've done that's ADA compliance related for a prior calendar year. And so um, uh, I'm not sure if Justin read that one very closely when I said, please review this, but uh, I do think that's something where we can at least show to you and to the public that we didn't do a plan and a study to, you know, just to get around some legal requirements that we really are putting um, money and effort towards um, compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, and hopefully then that becomes kind of that, that thing that we do every every year. Uh, and under our um, one thing that we talked about uh, quite heavily in the strategic planning session was talking about non-bargaining wages. And uh, I did have in here issuing a request for proposal for that as there seemed to be sort of general agreement that that was the, the route that we wanted to go. And so we'll, we'll see where we are kind of in budget process, get through budget and then um, move forward with bringing you back something for consideration on that one. And then finally, um, our fourth objective with our internal functions and finances, uh, we've got a lot of new disaster related claims and things that we just want to to make sure that we complete and move forward with. Um, and then 
also uh, making sure that we can move forward with some additional lean processes, lean processes as we come up with them, um, and uh, looking at our rental inspection program as was discussed in the strategic planning session as well. Any questions on this one? Okay, if not, then kind of that fourth goal, um, this is where again, you know, there's there's some things that we've consulted with Trail Bank and the Arts and Culture Alliance and Public Art Committee to talk about what are what are those things that, you know, are, are things that they see as being important where we can partner. And so that includes uh, looking at public art and council chambers, which I think it's been talked about for as long as I've been here, um, as well as in considering a public art master plan. And uh, the other thing I think really is important in that goal is partnering with the Alliance on a Great Places application as well. Uh, with, with Trail Bank, again, we, we partner with them on grant applications. Um, most of the time, it doesn't need to be a governmental entity to access those funds from the state and federal government. And so we continue to be partners there. Uh, we we were also talking about the uh, a trailhead um, as part of the Iowa River's Edge Trail and uh, looking at that being located um, at the softball complex and skate park area. And so there's a lot of conversations that need to happen there and we'd like to get that conversation started. And then we, we have a number of, of other entities that we do partner with as well. This is where, uh, you know, we've mentioned the impact program. Um, that we mentioned the Fisher Community Center as well as the school district with the exchange for the Anson Park and Bicentennial Park land, as well as then um, a, a few other things that have kind of been ongoing. Um, so uh, again, it was this was one that has it still has a few ongoing items, but I did try to convert as many as I could to something that had an action with a, a date required. And so I'd be happy to answer any questions on this one or receive any comments on this one. Um, I have a question, if I may, Your Honor. Please go ahead. And Jessica, I'm looking at the piece of public artwork in the city council chambers, and I appreciate the work that our um, Arts and Cultural Alliance has worked with us on the large pieces of public art that we've had throughout our community in different locations. One thing that I might suggest, and we do this in, in the uh, school system, is that we take artwork of the students and frame it and hang it around the facilities. I know some of it has gone to Emerson, to their offices, some of it has gone out to Grimes Farm to be displayed in those places, and it's changed out every year. And typically these are winners of the local art fair, so it's outstanding art, and it doesn't really cost anything. So I would certainly um, suggest that we take a look at our, our local community, at uh, the resources that some of uh, our local artists, meaning our students, um, could provide for us to enhance our uh, city council chambers with some public art. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments or questions? Okay. Looks to me like a good working draft here. Yes, and so that's really where I would say this is this is definitely a working draft. Um, I would be happy to put this back on for discussion at our next meeting to see if there's any final changes, which would then have us on a schedule of January 25th for approval of it. And so I'm totally fine with that. Oh, one, one last item I did want to point out, because we didn't have this, I was so hopeful we would have had this information when we were um, looking at our, when we were doing the strategic planning session. Uh, but this is some data, uh, very rough data from the draft of the uh, citizen survey, you know, at where the respondents were uh, identifying what we should be looking at over the next two years. And I thought that was something really important. I will say that first one, that overall economic health of Marshalltown is the only um, item that actually had more than 50% saying it is essential. As you can see, as you go down the line, there's varying percents of, of people saying what's essential. And generally, as you get into the essential and very important, important I think every, every category totals more than 50% when you have those. And so 
I think that we have something new that should be a measuring stick that as we look at our strategic plan, you know, is, is what we're doing in the next two years really trying, is it working on ticking off the, the boxes of what's been identified as being the most important um, from, from that survey. And so that's, that's all I have, Your Honor, unless there's any questions. Your Honor, if I may. Mr. Thompson, go for it. I would like to see this come back as a discussion item one more time. Um, give us all another two weeks to digest everything and, and then look at it in comparison to more, you know, if we haven't already, um, to this survey. Um, Jessica, would you have more information on the survey for us? When? Um, I my my goal is that I can get to review the draft, make sure there's just no technical errors or no general errors that I can find. Um, hopefully by the end of this week, and that would have them finalizing it in, in that early first week of January, um, which means that I'd be able to get that out to, to all of you that week as well. Before our next meeting. Before the next meeting. Well, I'd, yeah. I'd love to have this come back as discussion then. Yeah. So I will I will warn everybody that the the report for the community survey I think is like 50 to 80 pages long. It's it's lengthy, so uh, not a quick read. Thanks, Jessica. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, let's move on to the public comment area. And for that, I need to read this proviso that the members of the public may make comments on any item that was not on the agenda during this time. Um, speak in the phone or microphone with your name and address. Limit your talk to three minutes so others may comment. Direct your comments to the mayor and to the council as a whole. And the mayor and councilors are not to engage in discussion or debate on items raised by members of the public and no action can be taken on those items in order to comply with the open meetings law. With that said, the uh, Public comment time is now open. The microphones are open, Your Honor. Thank you. Let's uh, give everybody 10 seconds. Shoot, I was, I wish I had mentioned this earlier, but um, I saw that uh, Marky McKibben and maybe Larry were on earlier tonight. And uh, Larry was just designated as the University of Iowa Alumni Association Distinguished uh, Alumni for all of the service that he's done. You know, we've known him on the school board. We've known him down in the legislature. Um, he's done all sorts of things for this town. And I put that on the mayor's Facebook page, but I wanted to mentioned that publicly, that uh, that's quite an honor for him and, and for Marshalltown, too. Well, not having heard anybody speak up, let's um, call. Your Honor, yes. may, I, may I take a point of personal privilege? You may, certainly. Thank you. Well, I wanted to um, state that tonight is my last uh, city council meeting, and I have been honored to work with my fellow councilors um, working to improve Marshalltown and to make it a place that is welcoming and inclusive for all where we are looking to the future and building our community. So I want to say thank you for all of those who have helped me along the way and I look forward to continuing to work with counselors and with uh, Councillor Raymond Stark when he is um, sworn in as the first ward representative to make sure that we all um, are, are looking at all of our people in the in our community to help make Marshalltown the best place that it can be. So thank you very much. Again, I'm honored to have worked with you all. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd be remiss if I didn't say uh, what a pleasure it has been to have you on the council, Sue. And uh, we really will miss you around the, uh, the council dais, but we'll love having you down in Des Moines. Most of us know, because we've been on the council for a while, just what you did for the first ward after the tornado and now after the derecho. Um, I don't think anybody was out there um, helping people and collecting uh, cards and, and money and distributing those things for the people uh, in most need at that time. So 
we certainly do appreciate the work you've done for the city and on the city council. Okay, I would entertain a motion to go into closed section, session under section 21.5 of the Iowa Code to discuss real estate matters that uh, where premature disclosure could reasonably be expected to increase the price the government body would have to pay and uh, we do have a three client relationship with Roger Shell and also with the Lynch Dallas law firm. And uh, so if anybody wants to uh, make that motion, we'll go into closed session. So moved, Your Honor. Very good. Is there a second? second? Motion and second. Let's call a uh, roll on that one. Howdy. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Martin? Yes. Humphrey? Yes. Warren? Yes. Yes. Very good. We are in closed session. Uh, will you let me know when the room is cleared so that we can start the meeting and have a roll call? Yes, I am going to stop the recording of the go-to meeting at this point, and then I will start to remove everybody, um, and we will. I'll, I'll give you the heads up when when we're ready. Okay. Okay. Thank you.